Good afternoon. This is Dr. Bill White again with the American Orthodontic Society, and I'm going to talk about something this afternoon that's uh, very important for people who do orthodontics, especially if you work on people who have what we call deep bites, or the upper teeth come down way over and you hardly see the lower teeth like this, and when you straighten those teeth up, in other words, you intrude the upper and lower anterior teeth, and the back teeth come up a little bit as, as I intrude the upper teeth here, it extrudes the upper molar teeth back here. And the same thing as these go down, these go up a little, and so you increase the vertical dimension of the facial structure right in here. And when you get through, the muscles tend to bring it back to that. So the virtually every one of the real deep bite cases will uh, will tend to go back a little bit. If you take the retainer away, they'll go back a, quite a bit. So I want to show you some of the problems that come about when this begins to happen. Now we're going to take a, 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 I'm a young fellow here. He is a air traffic controller, and we had a problem uh, opening his bite. And let's just uh, look at his. Uh, picture here and show this coming through. Let me get my little uh, arrow going again right here. And this is the gentleman's teeth. When he first started, he had a real deep bite. I mean, these teeth right here, you couldn't even see these lower teeth over here. So it actually opened his bite, looks like a, <laughs> almost a half inch <laughs> in there. Now, that wasn't all gained by this. Now we intruded these teeth right here. Now if you want to know the whole story on this, uh, click on to our, his uh, complete video thing of him and it'll show you the intruding wires and and uh, the uh, bite place we used and everything to get this in there. Now when we picked this tooth up or these teeth across here, we did not bury them in the bone. The bone structure up here moved along with the teeth as they raised up like that. And this bone structure here on the lower teeth moved down as they, as these teeth uh, move the crowns of the teeth. We didn't bury them into the bone structure and make the teeth look shorter to do that. So we uh, erase that and go back over. Now one of the laterals, like we had this tooth, the cuspid in the right spot in here, and the lateral didn't quite fill the gap, so this would need to be kind of put a composite or build that tooth up or do something to close that gap a little bit, but this is the finished product that we got through with. Now let's go ahead and show you uh, some of the sides. Now here is the right side of the mouth, and he had all the teeth on the right side. And when it started out, you can see how they were biting real tight, and then the cuspid started down and going down coming across there, and we took this up. Now this wire that you see here, actually, uh, it there, there was one on top of it actually that went up like this and came over and we brought it down and hooked it to these teeth, and it pulled these teeth or moved them up, and the bone structure, the alveolar bone structure, went along with the teeth. You can look here maybe uh, more of uh, how the bone structure is. So the teeth didn't go into the bone structure. Now if you want one tooth to go in, you leave the others out and push on one, and you can actually uh, intrude a tooth into the, the bone structure to some extent, but not, 
not very far. So we had these intruding wires on here, and that'll show up on the uh, full case if you want to study it hard. Now a lot of people just want to look at it and see. And there's a very important thing here as far as people need to understand it, and it will fool you if you're not have really had some experience in in orthodontics, and I was fooled myself. It, when the first uh, somebody came in like that and they were hurting. Let me go down. Now this is the other side. He had a missing tooth when we started, but he didn't have anything to put in the gap. So we were gonna plan to put an implant or some. he was gonna get an implant from his regular dentist uh, after we got through. So we had to maintain that with a block of acrylic on his lower retainer when we got through. So here's the same thing over on the other side of the mouth except you see this gap that he's got in there and he had that gap when we started and we kept that space open right there as we went through the case. And now let's take a look at the finished product. Now here is the the lower retainer we put on his mouth, in his mouth, this was, is a uh, wraparound retainer. Nothing goes across here, and it comes back in here. Except we had bonded a th what we call a three to three year. This a cuspid to cuspid retainer bonded to the teeth across here, and that is fixed pretty well. This part comes out as he takes the retainer out. But we had to have something like that on the bottom because he was missing this tooth. So we had to replace that and hold that gap. And he, I think, already started getting an implant before we got through with him. You grind that acrylic off on the bottom as the implant is put in, the head of it sticks up in there some. And so you have to do that. But you have, this holds that space open for the full time during, during that. Now let's see, now here is the upper, and we had the lower teeth actually come in and make indentations in here. And this left the lower teeth just right underneath here with an up, over jet, an over bite, you know where when they bite forward, you bite your front teeth together, but your back teeth don't hit. So you can cut something off like that. But this is a thing that happens in here. We had moved these teeth a long way. Now, he did not lose this retainer, but I've had people, people that did lose them, or they would put them somewhere or leave them at grandmother's house or somebody, and they'd leave them out for two or three weeks, and then they put the retainer back in and everything goes fine for a day or two, and then their jaw starts hurting. And the reason it hurts, the person says, well, my retainer warped or changed. And they'll come in and say, uh, it wasn't bothering me. I left it out, and then I put it back in, and my teeth started hurting. So the retainer has moved, but it's not the retainer that moves. It's the teeth that have moved. I don't know that my uh, picture here will show that much, but let me kind of go in. And, and from this point right here, I'll show you. The teeth were right up underneath here. It's okay if they, over a period of months, they'll close together some little, little bit. But you leave this retainer out for two or three weeks, and these upper teeth will be down here on these teeth. They'll be trying to come there if you take the retainer out. So we got a distance of, of where they are here and where they go to here. And now when you put the retainer in, they touch at the front and they don't touch anywhere, no going to the, to the back of the mouth except the jaw joints in here. And now you bite on anything, 
and it puts pressure on the joints. And this is what causes the pain and the discomfort. And so when they leave the case out, if you, if you really are watching it, it is hurting a great deal, you can put a pad under the molar teeth back here, let these teeth come back together again, and now you can take the pad out, and now your load is up here in the front part of the mouth, where it should be, not on the condyles. In other words, when, it, when you have this uh, relapse, these teeth go back up here. Now you put the, put the rotator in and they stop at this point. But then there's nothing hitting in the back part of the teeth back here to, to take this support except the condyles are down. Uh, they're taking the load and the anterior teeth are taking the load and there are many people who cannot tolerate that. Now some people can tolerate and the teeth will come back together and, and you won't uh, know any difference. But this will fool you a lot of times. The person will come in, say, well, I lost it, I put it back in, and after a day or two it was really hurting my mouth, so I've taken it out. If they leave it out very long, it will deepen quite a bit. In other words, it's going to try to go back kind of like it was. So don't let it fool you. And if you've got somebody with a lot of pain, you have to go back and put something under the back teeth back here and let the teeth along the side come back in contact. And these will be in contact and these will be in contact. And when that does, the load is shared along in the teeth and not in the condyle. And that's the way you come out of it.